Hi there. This is Becky Raisler. And I'm on YouTube and Instagram as Becky's Junk Journals. Today I'm going to show you how I make little golden book uh, covers. And um, it's kind of daunting when you first look at it and you say, wow, <laughs> how am, am I going to take a little golden book and turn it into something like this? And um, it's really not hard once you get the hang of it. Here's some, uh, these these two books I've shown you are ones that uh, I just recently finished. And I have the um, uh, flip throughs on my YouTube channel at Becky's Junk Journals. So anyway, this is what the covers look like before I put anything in them. And... They are like this, and they fold up like that. And I'm going to show you real quick what I do with them once I've got them taken apart. First thing you have to do, and I'm going to walk you through my thing there. First thing you have to do is get your um, little golden book and the spine making parts together. Um, first thing you'll do is get your, you got to have your new spine. You got to have some Tyvek, which this is off of a, a, a mailing party mail envelope. It's thin, but you cannot tear it. I mean, it is kind of it's papery on one side and a little bit slicker on the inside, but you cannot tear this stuff. And you can buy Tyvek. Uh, you can you can buy book cloth, which is uh, cloth with paper on the backing. You can make your own book cloth instead of doing this method. This is the way I do it because I happen to have the supplies handy. My spine is made uh, from cereal box that I've doubled. I've taken two uh pieces of cereal box and glued them together to make it this thick and this for me this is this works well for my spine um because i don't like to buy anything i don't have to <laughs> and i can get these old priority mail envelopes pr free and and i get them when people send stuff to me every once in a while the other thing you're going to need to get together is uh some fabric a long strip of fabric and um, I have figured about four inches wide I didn't measure it but I guesstimated four inches wide a two inch spine four inches wide for the Tyvek and four and a half this may even be five inches wide for my strip of fabric okay and then of course you have your little golden book once you've got your things together, um, you need to take apart this original little golden book. And what I do is I find where the staples are. This one is way high up, and then it's got one down here. Usually, usually this one is down about here. But I cut just a little strip on each side and then scrape off the paper and I've already done that on this one. You can see the the uh, uh, staple right there and right there. And what I'll do is I will pry that staple up with my knife or whatever you have. If you use your exacto knife, you're going to break the tip off of it like I did. But once I get it um, pried up enough where I get to it, I will take the staple out using one of these staple removers or um, I will use pliers to pull it out. And once you pull that staple out, all you have to do is take your X-Acto knife and just run it right down the center of that to cut the foil just lightly. Just lightly. Whoa! <laughs> I'm going to kill myself here. But anyway, you just all enough, just enough to flip the 
split the foil and when you take it apart when you uh and when you pull it apart it'll come right out without a problem so that's how you you get the um fabric together and these are the colors that i've chosen for my spine to go with this one and this is the one i'm going to be working on and i've got I've got my uh, book all taken apart, and once once you pull it apart like that, you're going to end up with two signatures inside that are complete together, and you're going to put those aside because you don't want to do you don't want to cut the ends or do anything to these yet. Um, before I go any further, I have to tell you these little golden books have been well loved. I no telling what kind of uh, mess you're going to find on these covers, but uh, take the time and don't skip this step, please. Clean the outside with the baby wipe real good. You don't want to soak it down. This one's pretty beat up, but uh, this is how it looks after I've cleaned it real good, and I got a lot of crud off this. And I just do the front and the back. I don't do the insides because... The insides are paper, and the outsides have a little bit of coating on them. Uh, so, uh, but this one is going to be with the two-inch spine, and it's going to have a blue um, fabric cover on it. Now, once I've got it cut, I'm going to lay my spine, and I'm going to put it, and like I said, I, I rarely measure anything, but I'm going to guesstimate about an eighth of an inch, and I'm going to, I can't see it very well from where I am, and I'm not going to glue from the place I'm in, but I'm going to show you how I do it, so you will see, okay. Just enough that when you glue it all down, get it all lined up, glue it all down. Well, the first thing you do is you get it all lined up with that little space in between it. And then you take your piece of tie that that you've cut. Uh, you can also use um, like artist tape or, or even... Um, uh, um, what is that tape? That gray tape. Uh, it's thicker. I don't like to use tape because it's got a real sticky uh, back to it. Uh, a lot of people do just put two pieces of tape over it to reinforce the spine. Uh, but I use tie that because it's real thin. And when I put my needle through it, it doesn't drag like uh, tape with its sticky back. It it drag. It kind of grips on on the. Uh, the needle and the string, so I usually don't use it. Then I take my piece of tie back that I have got measured and I sort of eyeball it and put it right down the center like that. And then I will glue this thing down. And I use for this uh, whole process, I use Fabri-Tac glue it's the best that I've been able to uh, come up with. Once you've got that glued down, you're going to want to, uh, and when you glue it down, you want to put, make sure that uh, you've got your space there so it'll open up correctly. And that it will be, that way at this point, your spine will be completely uh, connected Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your strip of fabric and um, starting, um, let's see, I do it this way. I start at the top and leave a little space like an inch down at the bottom and then I will glue this down completely. 
with the Fabri-Tac on top of the Tyvek. And you see it covers up the Tyvek. So the uh, fabric's just a little bit wider than the Tyvek. So it's covered up. And then I'll glue all that down. Then I will turn my uh, book over and glue it down on the other side. And once I've got it completely done and wrapped around, it'll be like this. Then I'll have this part come up and be glued right here at the bottom. I'll, have to, I'll trim this down shorter and then I'll glue this right here at the bottom. This is the um, least uh, noticeable method that I have learned to do this. Uh, and once you get it all glued down, hey, you've got your book cover made. All you have to do at this point is uh, do your trim along the edges like this one. See, I've done the fabric wrapped around to the back, and then I put down uh, some a lace edge, and then I put sent down some trim so the lace edge is peeking out on that side. And that's how it looks on the inside. I ran out of this, so I just used a, a solid color trim, and that's fine. Once I get all my stuff in here, nobody's going to see it or know the difference. The next thing you're going to do, once you've got it all decorated like this, you're going to want to figure out um, how you're going to close this thing. I like to do my closures in several different ways, but, but my favorite way is to make a tie and tie it in the middle. Sometimes I wrap the uh, ribbon all the way around the outside and pull it through these holes and then tie here. But uh, uh, you figure out how you're gonna be doing your closure. And then if you have any <clears throat> uh, holes that need to be punched, you need to go ahead and punch those holes before you do anything else. Uh, like sew in the signatures and anything else because it's really hard to punch the holes <laughs> once you've got the signature sewn in. Um, I punch a hole and put a, 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 it's not a grommet, what are those little things? I punch a hole and, and put the little grommet cover thing um, in the center up here and this is where I will attach my, my um, type my tassel that I make. And in this case, I just ran a, a little ring through there and then attached it with another ring. You can buy those little um, posts with a ring on them that you can put in here from, I believe Tim Holtz makes it. But um, this is a lot less expensive and, and it, I think, looks just as nice. Uh, this book has corners. That's one thing that I would do uh, when I get to this stage. I would decide whether I'm going to put corners on it or not. It really depends on how beat up the, the book is. I probably won't put corners on this one. This one may need corners. Uh, We'll just have to see when I get to that point. But uh, once I get it together, I'll be able to tell better. But I've got my holes uh, punched for my ties that I'm going to do. And I've got my hole punched for my uh, tassel to be attached. So figure out your, your method of closing it. And figure out if you're going to attach a tassel to it or not. And how you're going to attach it before you do um, any sewing in of signatures. And that's really all there is to it. It's not that hard. And once you, if you start with your, um, your uh, new spine already ready to go and your book ready to go, all clean and everything, and then you've got your Tyvek and your fabric, ready to go. It's really not hard. 
um, it just takes some time and a lot of that Fabri-Tac glue. Okie dokie. If you have any questions, be sure. And oh, there's one more thing I wanted to tell you. Some, if your book is really old, it's not going to have a barcode on it. Um, uh, this one is not that old, and it does have it had a barcode right here, right on the front of it. And uh, so I found a sticker that sort of blended in with the rest of the thing and just covered that barcode up with a sticker. There was a little uh, mark. Somebody had written in a price or something, and I just covered it up with a sticker up there. And then on the back, there wasn't anything that I had to cover up. But that's how you cover up the barcodes and uh, sticker mess on your um, journals. And I believe this one is another... Nope. It's not the other example of the one. Let's see. Is this it? Yes. This one had a barcode right down here on the back. And all I did was cut a piece of uh, paper and glue it down there. And you don't even notice it anymore. But uh, the front was in still pretty good condition. I've been lucky. Those uh, were in pretty good condition. This one is was a lot older it, uh, and it did not have a barcode but when I cleaned it it, it took, picked up some of the yellow coloring on the edges so you have to clean it really gently um, sometimes you have a lot of crud on there and you have to give it some press it down some um, to get it clean and it will pick up the coloring from the book um, this one had something down here it may have been a barcode and I put a sticker on it can you even see it there's just a sticker right there where that barcode and it just sort of blends right in okay if you have any questions if you'd like to uh, make a quick uh, a copy of that you're welcome to but if you have any questions please leave them in the comments and I will get right back to you come see me on Instagram and on YouTube at Becky's Junk Journals and you'll find me on Facebook and all the different junk journal groups have a great day bye bye